Happy hot news, everybody. Welcome back to your Wednesday edition of all the tech news that's been going on in the world today. I'm your host, Brett, and we're going to be going over AMD just continuing to crush the iteration game every year. They just get better and better. And the next generation that we're looking at is going to be even better than what we have now. And Apple decides that what you have now is trash and you have to pay five hundred and fifty dollars to upgrade to bigger trash on your ears. We're going to get into all of that after we talk about today's video sponsor, ButcherBox. My friends, I used to be like you and buy my meat at the grocery store until we found out about ButcherBox and we've just been having it delivered to us because number one, it's super convenient, but then number two, it's actually really high quality meat that they deliver. They're committed to premium meat, 100% grass fed and grass finished beef, heritage breed pork and free range organic chicken, as well as being super affordable with their products being less than $6 per meal, which shipping being free. And what's also free is that if you use the link in the video description, when you sign up for ButcherBox, you're going to get free bacon for life. Yes, my friends, free bacon. Every single order of ButcherBox that you do in the future will have bacon in it for the lifetime of your membership. OK, free bacon when you sign up for ButcherBox using the link in the video description. How, I, how many ways can I say free bacon? Get the bacon. Check it out. The link in the video description. Big thanks to ButcherBox for sponsoring this video. And now let's talk about what has me so dang excited. And that is we have new indication of what AMD is going to be doing next in the mobile realm, which I know, I know doesn't sound as exciting as all the desktop stuff, but it really is, especially since Apple's come in and started shaking things up with their own silicon with the M1 chips, the new Ryzen 9 5900HX flagship with eight Zen 3 cores and overclocking looks to be a beast. We have performance from that as well as the 5800H. The Zen 3 is running at 4.6 gigahertz on a laptop, mind you. That is really fast considering what AMD puts out on the desktop and it should be about 35 to 45 watts of power. Now there are some benchmarks that are coming out with regards to this and just comparing it to the current 10th gen Intel as well as the previous Ryzen 9 4900HS what we find is that in single core performance it is 24% better than Intel and 30% better than AMD and in multi-core it's 25% better than Intel but lagging slightly behind in multi-core which is really intriguing but there's a lot that we don't still know about this so We'll have to see how that plays out. It might just have to be a TDP boost clock issue that has to get worked out. But the benchmarks from this were also running 48 gigabytes of RAM, not 64, 32. So who knows what the situation is there? Anyways, it does look to be incredibly exciting. 30% single performance increase. And it's also expected to have the RTX 30 series of GPUs with the ROG Zephyrus 15.6 inch. You can see here RTX 3080 right there. This says Pinnacle, and Pinnacle is a distributor in South Africa. I wonder if they leaked it. That would make a lot of sense. The tech industry in SA is not known for being tight-lipped. I knew way too many things that I shouldn't have known. But that's not all the details we've got. Now we've got some more information about the GPU side of things as well, because while it's great to have a 5900HX with an RTX 3080, don't you want to get the new RX 6000? Sure, they're not as good in ray tracing scenarios, but they actually perform really well in regular video games. And it looks like those are going to be brought out some time soon with some information coming out regarding the Navi 22, 23 and 24 discrete chips that essentially being the 6400M, 6500M, 6600M and 6700M in the mobile lineup. Not a whole lot on actual performance benchmarks, but from what we've seen on desktop, it looks really promising for AMD and the fact that they consume less power than Nvidia means that they should hopefully translate slightly better into the mobile environment. But you can see here Navi 22 with 146 total graphics power. So while there's no benchmarks at this point, it does seem to indicate that AMD is really actively working on this. And hopefully we should start seeing these roll out towards the end of Q1 or even potentially Dr. Lisa Sue might talk more about this at the CES presentation that she's going to be having, I think, on January 12th. And last little bit of AMD nonsense before we jump into Apple shenanigans, and that is the 6900 XT launched yesterday. We'll leave a link in the video description for the video cards review roundup that's out there. Essentially, it's a thousand dollars, which makes it a better value than the 3090, but it doesn't beat the 3090 and everything. But that's okay because you're saving 500 bucks. And you know what you could do with that 500 bucks? You could get it all in once and you can go slap your friend who bought a 3090 with it. Presuming you have friends. 
Now let's talk about some Apple stuff. We'll get to the AirPods Max in a second, but there's some indication that Apple might be working on a matte black color for future products, which might absorb some light, which obviously black does as a color by itself, but it's a special patent that they're working on that could get it to do it. So it's different than other matte black scenarios. Anyways, MKBHD is happy, I'm sure. And then we've got the AirPods Max, which are just, they're $550, which I just, I don't understand how you justify this unless they're supremely better than anything we've heard before. Four, but the AirPods Pros with their noise canceling doesn't seem to bode well for what this is going to be. Anyways, they are beautiful over ear active noise canceling hands free headsets, which have high fidelity spatial audio adaptive EQ and all of the good Apple design to them, as well as a custom H1 chip, which is actually pretty good, to be quite honest. It's going to have a stainless steel headband to fit a wide variety of head shapes and sizes like your boy who's got the flat dome in the back. It says it has a revolutionary mechanism that attaches the ear cups to the headband via magnet, which is actually kind of neat for replacements. You can see it here. This it's a neat looking thing. I personally am not a huge fan of the fact that the dial or the digital crown, as Apple calls it, is up at the top because that's going to make adjusting the volume a little weird unless it's a capacitive thing on the side. But you can see that there is some really good engineering that has gone into it. It does look pretty OK. I'm not a fan of the headband shape that bugs me a little bit. And it comes with this like little carrying case purse. But you know what it doesn't come with? a charger. You're going to have to buy your own charger and aux cable in case you want that because it doesn't come with an aux cable. So you have to get a three and a half millimeter to lightning cable in order to connect it that way, which Apple's own branded one is $35 right now. And then it's supposedly going to have 20 hours of battery life. But for $550, you can get two of these. Sony WH-1000XM4s. These are basically the standard in the industry for what are the best over-ear noise-canceling headphones. They're $278 right now. We'll leave an Amazon affiliate link in the video description. If you want noise-canceling headphones, I've had these. They're great. They hold up really well. $278 makes a whole lot more sense. $350 makes a whole lot more sense than $550, unless it's going to also clean the inside of my ears. I don't see how the AirPods Max are going to be worth that price. But, you know, Apple doesn't necessarily have to justify their price. They just have to convince people to buy it. But the good news is in case that you wear out your ear pads, you can buy a replacement pair for 69 nice dollars. Or if you haven't worn them out, but you just want to mix and match colors, it's actually not terribly expensive. And the fact that they attach magnetically makes it an easy replacement process for you. Last little bit of Apple news. Apparently, Adobe Lightroom has gotten updated for the Apple Silicon Max. So the M1 is now processing batch files of Lightroom photos faster than Intel Max. So just the M1s continue to get fast. As soon as the apps are getting optimized for ARM, they're just, they're, they're blowing everything out of the water. So we'll have to wait and see until more things get done, such as Photoshop and hopefully eventually maybe Premiere. And we can see if that's, uh, if, if, if professionals might want to consider switching over to Apple completely. And people who are on the Pixel 2 and Pixel 2 XL might want to consider switching over because Google has finally started rolling out the last update for these phones. They went end of life in October with one update that was supposed to be coming out. And that is now rolling rolling out to Pixel 2 and Pixel 2 XL owners. So press F to pay respects. And press F to pay respects for the DualSense controller. Apparently there are reports coming out that there is stick drift that is happening. Your, the joystick is uh, just wobbling all over the place. And at least according to this Tweaktown article, all of the fixes that they tried do not work. So uh, switch V2, heck yes. Hopefully it's not widespread and it's just a few of them, but if it's another Joy-Con gate, this, this could be bad. This is why you don't buy on launch day, friends. And Ubisoft's making the Prince of Persia launch day a little bit further in the future with the remake getting delayed. It was supposed to come out in January. And I'm saying in a post that it's going to be delayed until at least March of 2021. And given the state of what the trailer looked like, please delay it more. It looks like a PS3 game that you're trying to launch in the next generation of consoles. Don't don't do that. No! And what, what should get done, though, is Atlas launching Persona 5 Strikers because that's coming to the West February 23rd, 2021. Not only that, it's coming to the PS4, which was expected Nintendo Switch, which we knew because it was on the Switch in the, the Japanese release. But they also announced that it's coming to Steam. Frick yes. So Persona 4 Golden as well as Persona 5 Strikers are on Steam. Bring Persona 5 Royal Atlas. OK, I'm talking to my wall right now, but come on, Sega Atlas, please. Persona 5 Royal on, on the PC. Do it so I can play on my laptop. Hurting me. 
And then Knights of the Old Republic 2 is coming to mobile on December 18th. It's going to cost you $15, but you can play it on an iPad. And Redbox wants you to stream more movies because apparently the, the DVD rental industry is not doing too great. And they apparently had an on-demand TV service, but now they're adding movies to that as well. Okay. Sorry, Redbox. I... I, I don't know enough about you to comment on you anymore. And I don't know enough about Stadia to comment on them anymore, except for the fact that they're rolling out YouTube live streaming, which it's, it's just nice to see Google implementing their own services into their own service when they said that their own service was gonna be implemented into their own service when their own service launched, but then it didn't and it took over a year for them to be able to do it. But then other companies who have launched similar products have been able to implement their services into their service faster than their service could be implemented into their own service. Good job, Google. Everybody give it up for Google. And YouTube's now gonna allow you to stream in HDR, which, you know, we needed that absolutely before we needed the ability to stream in 120 FPS for video games. Of course, yeah, HDR makes a whole lot more sense with all of the HDR content that everybody's streaming, which, you know, I, I, I can complain about that, but obviously you have to have the support for it before it rolls out, which leads me to the next article, NextMind shipping their brain computer interface dev kits for $3.99. Picks up on your brain signals, translates that to the computer, and then bam, you're using your computer. The dev kit is now available $399 plus a $50 flat fee shipping. You, you can get it for $450 before the end of the year. Allegedly, I'm like half curious about doing this simply because it could potentially allow my son to use a lot more. Since he has motor skill issues, this could be revolutionary, but obviously we'd have to have programming for it first. Highly intrigued by this. Maybe I'm tempted to pick it up. And you should be tempted to pick up ButcherBox, who's the sponsor of today's episode of Hot News. You get free bacon for the lifetime of your membership. And it's just convenient. This is how we get meat here at my household. We just place our order. It comes in in a frozen box. We don't even have to worry about putting it away immediately because it stays frozen. Even if we forget it outside for an entire day, we didn't do that, I promise you, but it stays frozen because they ship it in a really nice insulated cooler. Anyways, check the link in the video description, get some free bacon and get yourself some just nice glass of water, relax, kick up your feet, prepare for cyberpunk tomorrow and be ready for the tech news from us here at Hot News. And I'm done, goodbye. Thank you for tuning in. Now let's talk about some Apple stuff. Why is that here? Okay.